BMW M1. From 1978 to 1981, the dream car of a generation. Sporty, powerful, amazing. For four years, the wedge-shaped mid-engine sports car was much admired, served as inspiration for modern art, and with a top speed of 265 kilometers per hour, was Germany's fastest sports car. In spite of this, the M1 was seldom victor on the racetrack. 456 examples were built and sold for 100,000 Deutschmarks. The BMW M1, which stood just 1.14 meters high, was no commercial success in itself, but it established once and for all the sporting pedigree and image of the Munich car maker. Villa d'Este on Lake Como, 2008. 30 years after the original M1, BMW presents a glorious show car reminiscent of both the 1972 Turbo and the later M1 series. M1 Homage is the car's name and the concept is indeed a perfect tribute from any perspective, from the front or in the powerful rear end view. When a show car so clearly echoes a glorious past, one is inclined to ask whether it heralds the arrival of a new M1 series. Uh, BMW has uh, designed this study um, for two reasons. One is that the Concorso d'Eleganza in Villa d'Est uh, has always been a competition between uh, car designers. Uh, car design studios in the past used to design a study especially for this Concorso and we wanted to revive that tradition. The other reason why we have uh, designed this uh, concept is that this year, uh, it's 30 years ago, that BMW launched the M1. And with this concept, we also want to celebrate that. In short, the show car is a mix of past, present and future. Uh, in this study, uh, we mixed a typical M1 uh, character elements and also some design features that uh, belong to our current design language or our future design language. Of course, the proportions are very typical to the M1, very wide, very low. Uh, and then uh, when you look at the front end graphic uh, with this very narrow slot here, that is also something that comes from the original M1. Uh, the original M1 had pop-up headlamps and that we would not do in the future for safety reasons but what we can do in the future is actually make the headlamps come out of this very narrow slot because with LED technology that would be possible. Uh, another element that comes actually from the future uh, are these uh, blades uh, and the function would be an aerodynamic function. Uh, this is something that we have learned actually from our engagement in Formula One. Uh, we now know a lot more about aerodynamics than 30 years ago when BMW first built the M1. In side view, of course, the proportions uh, talk about speed. Uh, you see also sharp lines. Sharp lines belong to BMW design because they are an expression of engineering precision. The wheels, uh, we believe, are interesting. They are a reference to the original M1. The M1 was really the first uh, sports car with uh, mainly closed wheel designs. Uh, of course, we have added a little bit more sculpture. And the same goes for this whole area here. Uh, this is where the engine would sit in a mid-engine car and you see all the lines pick up speed towards the rear uh, and then when we look at uh, the rear view uh, and of a mid-engine car of course the rear view is important it is what people would see most when they uh, are being overtaken by this car the rear end uh, of this car should exude power and strength and I believe that it does so uh, by this very strong shoulder um, and uh, actually here in the rear you see also one element that we took from the original M1. The original M1 was the only car uh, in the BMW lineup that has two logos instead of one in the center. And of course we wanted to do that on this study as well. And then when you look at the uh, tail lamps you'll see that they are very very narrow, very very flat. And that too uh, can be made possible in the future through LED technology. In 1979, pop art painter Andy Warhol had turned the M1 into the world's fastest artwork. The Warhol M1 took its place among BMW's art cars, a renowned series of automobiles embellished by leading modern painters. It's hardly surprising that this was the first time the famous artist had applied lacquer and paint to a car body. Warhol was very complimentary to BMW when he said, the car is far better than the artwork.
What it could do, the M1 showed at the racetracks. As a secondary event series associated with the Formula One season of 1979, the Pro Car Series saw non-professional drivers at the wheel of the 470 horsepower M1 battling with race legends like Nicky Lauda, Nelson Piquet and Clay Regazzoni. In the curves and corners of the Monte Carlo Grand Prix course, the mid-motor racer showed its power and perfect handling. Unfortunately, the Pro Car Series was abandoned after just three years. But back to the present day, to the M1 homage. This car is not uh, scheduled to go in series production. Uh, the goal of this concept study is really uh, celebrating our rich heritage and showing also how uh, BMW Design wants to uh, work with that tradition. Uh, we love it, we want to celebrate it, but I think in the concept study you also see many elements that are modern uh, and that can take us into uh, the design future. And uh, so this uh, concept serves also as an inspiration for every other project that we do. But the M1 homage turns everyone who sees it into a dreamer. The uncanny reprise of the classic M1 proportions melded with the current design language of the mark cries out for series manufacture. Audi has the R8, Mercedes the SLR. Why should BMW not follow with a new M1 for tomorrow? And with these last impressions of this beauty, we say goodbye until the next time here on Motor Vision Classic.